So in our previous demonstrations, we've looked at how BlazeMeter can help you with your performance, your UI, and your end user monitoring. We've also looked at how mock services can help you when you're testing. What we're going to look at now is, is APIs. So obviously in the previous demonstration, we were using the Visa API. And also within digital banking application, we have APIs. Now we need to test those as part of our testing. Now within the functional testing of BlazeMeter, uh, originally we did the GUI functional test. We're going to do an API functional test now. Now there's several ways to create these tests. Now one is you can come in here and just enter the details in the UI. You can toggle the UI to an editor and then type in using Taurus the, uh, the test you want to create. Or you can take an input from Swagger. So your engineering teams, as they develop their definitions in Swagger, they can take that definition and load it into the tool to automatically build a test. Now, also those tests can be data driven. So if we look at the scenario level here, we can see we've got certain variables. So we've got obviously the, the address, the endpoint. We've got some variables down here that we're passing into the actual test we're going to run. And then those variables are picked up. So if we go here, we've got the ID that's coming from that variable list. We can then run this API test. We can run it in the context of the platform. So if I click on the run test button, we're now initiating that test. And we're going to run through those APIs uh, and check that they're available on our digital banking application. So this test will take a few seconds. Now, the great thing is that these APIs that we've actually got here uh, that we're using as part of our development effort, we can then reuse in the API monitoring when we move into production. So we can take the same API test we're using here as part of our API monitoring in production. Now, the tests are now complete. Um, we had six tests. They all passed. Um, these are the actual, so the, the folders of the scenarios, if we click on those, we actually see the test inside that. So here's one of our requests. You can see the ID, the ID that was passed as part of our variables. We have the response time. Um, there's often an assertion, so we know that it passed that test. If we scroll down, we have response times. Um, we have the response that came back. So as part of this testing, we can not only just check for the actual status code, we can also look for the content of the response to validate that the data is correct within the API test that we're running. Now, we know that a, a failing API can be devastating to an application. And if you think we've now incorporated the Visa API into our application, so should there be an issue with this API, um, our end users would see it as a, a failure within our application itself. So obviously Visa will give us an SLA as to say that this API will be available for a certain percentage of time. But we need to be able to monitor that. We need to understand if the, is that API available? And also is Visa sticking to the SLA that they supply to us? Now we don't have control of the infrastructure or the API itself. So we need a way of actually monitoring that to alert us to the fact that that API may no longer be available. And obviously if there were an issue with the API, um, we can prove any outage and that may be something we can use to get reimbursement if we're paying for the API to may be made available to us. So what we can do is actually take this API and then monitor it in the API monitoring tab. So we're now looking at the API monitoring screen. So previously we we're looking at functional API tests. These are now API um, active monitoring tests. So we've got one here for the Visa Direct API. And this is showing us, is that Visa API active? Now, we've run this twice, and it worked once and failed once. We can click on the, the test itself to look at the output. So in this case, what we can see is um, we sent a request. We got back a 200. We can actually see the response. So as you can see here, that's the response, as you saw when we look at the mock services. Um, if we looked at the one that was failed, what we can see is... Um, it was a 404 came back from the endpoint. So at the moment, we're not actively monitoring this API, but what we can do is enable the scheduler. And we can now say, we want to test this API perhaps every minute. And at this point, whatever we're defined to monitor that API, every minute, the platform is going to run a test. You can see it running the test on the left-hand side now. Um, it will run the test, validate the response to come back correctly and move on. So if I go back to the, the dashboard screen, um, these are the APIs we're currently monitoring. And on the right hand side here, we can see various things. So one is we can see uh, the bar indicates the status. So obviously we had a failure and now we have green. On the right hand side, we have things like success rate. We also have the average response times. 
we can change this time frame perhaps to look at it for the last hour we can look at it for the last 30 days so we can adjust the view based on the the time frame we'll look at we can drill into these so let me go and drill into the digital bank one so we're actively monitoring our digital banking application uh, we can see here that we we did have a failure if i drill into that and we can actually then indicate what the problem was so at the top of the screen we can change this screen to just show the failed transaction by clicking on this link here that will take us straight to the failed transaction and you can see here what happened was um, we had a timeout so we'd set an assertion that the response time wasn't to be less than 400 and it was 625 hence the test failed so the api itself is responding but in that instance we had a, a poor performing api on that endpoint now as part of the monitoring we can also be notified so we can set up notification through various mechanisms you can see on the right here we have various integrations to run to workflow tools so we can talk to things like slack we can send pages there's various systems we can integrate with we can also change the view we're looking at here and change this dashboard view to a card system to get more data onto the dashboard so what we can see here on the right this is the the visa direct api that we just set up uh, we can see the the average response time we can see the success rate um, we have one view into all of our apis that are actively being monitored now we can be monitoring here our own apis as well as any third party api that may be something we depend on as part of our application Thank you.